Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, we'll be overclocking the Intel Core i5 11600K processor all the way up to 5.1 gigahertz using the Asus Maximus 13 Hero motherboard. The Intel Core i5 11600K is the little brother of the overclockable Rocket Lake k skewed CPUs. It is the successor of the i5 10600K, which we overclocked once before to 5.2 gigahertz on this channel, also with a Maximus Hero motherboard. The Core i5 11600K offers 6 cores and 12 threads with a listed base frequency of 3.9 GHz and a listed boost frequency up to 4.9 GHz. It is rated at 125 Watt TDP and should retail at an MSRP of 310 US dollars. The Maximus 13 Hero motherboard is the successor of the Maximus 12 Hero motherboard which we used in a previous overclocking video. It is the entry level offer in the Asus ROG lineup and offers plenty of overclocking features such as a 14 plus 2 power stages, the ROG water cooling zone, a debug code display, as well as AI overclocking and Memtest 86 integrated in the BIOS. In this video we'll cover the basic steps required to get your CPU all the way up to 5.1 GHz using custom loop water cooling. We'll dig into four overclocking strategies. First, we will unlock all the power limits and enable XMP. Second, we will use the Packaged Temperature Threshold AI feature to push the CPU frequency up. Third, we will allow the processor to do its thing and overclock using AI overclocking. Lastly, we'll do some manual overclocking. But before we jump into the overclocking, let's talk a little bit about Rocket Lake and the hardware that we'll be using in this guide. Intel's 11th generation core products for desktop, codenamed Rocket Lake, was officially introduced during the CES 2021 trade show and launched earlier this month in March 2021. Rocket Lake is the successor to Intel's 10th generation Comet Lake processors. Rocket Lake sports a brand new CPU core architecture while still on the vastly improved 14 nanometer process node. The CPU core is built upon the Cypress Cove architecture, which is the backported version of Sunny Cove, a core designed for 10 nanometer Ice Lake with some additional performance improvements. Due to the increased core size, the flagship Core i9-11900K offers up to 8 cores and 16 threads compared to its Core i9-10900K predecessors, 10 core and 20 threads. The Core i5 is still 6 cores and 12 threads. Rocket Lake CPUs do gain support for Deep Learning Boost and AVX512 instructions, a new and improved cache hierarchy, and up to 19% instructions per clock improvement. Other new features include slightly elevated default memory support, up to DDR4-3200, 20 PCIe 4.0 lanes from the CPU, double bandwidth of the DMI link, and moving the integrated graphics to the new XE graphics architecture. Compared to the 10600K, the 11600K has a 200MHz lower base frequency of 3.9GHz, while offering a 100MHz higher maximum boost frequency of 4.9GHz. Rocket Lake will work on both 500 and 400 series motherboards, though not on the B460 or H410. Obviously, that means Rocket Lake CPUs fit in the LJ1200 socket. Along with the Intel Core i5 11600K processor and Asus ROG Maximus 13 Hero motherboard, in this guide we will be using an NVIDIA RTX 2080 Ti, a pair of G-Skill Trine Z DDR4-4266 memory sticks, a Seasonic Prime 850W Platinum power supply, and of course, EK Quantum water cooling. All this is mounted on top of our favorite open bench table. The cost of the components should be around $3,300. That's $310 for the CPU, $600 for the cooling, $500 for the motherboard, $1,300 for the graphics card, $180 for the memory, $200 for the power supply, and $200 for the bench table. With all this in mind, let's jump into the benchmarks and the overclocking. Here's a list of the benchmarks used in this guide. Before we get started pushing the Core i5-11600K, let's first have a look at the scoring and stock settings. Note that by default, the Maximus 13 Hero has Turbo Boost 2.0 limits unlocked. So in order to see the performance at stock settings, you will have to go into the BIOS. Go to the Extreme Tweaker menu, Set ACES multi-core enhancement to disabled and force all limits. Here's the performance at stock. Super Pi 4M, 33.679 seconds. Geekbench 5 single, 1618 points. Geekbench 5 multi, 7286 points. 
HW1X265 4K, 13.053 frames per second. Cinebench R23 single, 1,506 points. Cinebench R23 multi, 9,396 points. V-Ray 5, 7,673 V samples. 3D Mark Night Raid, 34,825 points. Final Fantasy 14, 86.71 frames per second. When running Prime 95 small FFT with AVX enabled, the CPU operates stably at 4 GHz with 1.124 volt. The average CPU temperature is 59 degrees centigrade, the average VRM temperature is 35 degrees centigrade, and the average water temperature is 25 degrees centigrade. The average CPU package power is 127 watt. When running Prime 95 small FFT with AVX disabled, the CPU operates stably at 4.4 GHz with 1.175 volt. The average CPU temperature is 53 degrees centigrade. The average VRM temperature is 35 degrees centigrade. And the average water temperature is 26 degrees centigrade. The average CPU package power is 127 watt. Now let's start our first overclocking strategy. However, before we get started, make sure to locate the clear CMOS button on your motherboard. In case your system doesn't boot up after setting the settings, you can press this button and your system will automatically reset the settings and you can start over with a safe system. Any aspiring overclocker should definitely know about the Turbo Boost 2.0 technology. Turbo Boost 2.0 allows the CPU to run temporarily at higher power levels when there's sufficient current, power or thermal headroom. The long story short is that Turbo Boost 2.0 allows the processor to operate at increased power consumption temporarily above the TDP rating to achieve higher performance. It manages this by accumulating energy budget during periods of idle time that can be redeployed when necessary during periods of high load. We discussed the Intel Turbo Boost 2.0 technology at length in a previous video titled Intel Turbo Boost 2.0 and Intel Turbo Max 3.0 Explored. While we use a different CPU, the Turbo Boost principles explained in that video also apply to our configuration. By unlocking all the power limits, we effectively tell the CPU to run at the highest possible Turbo Boost settings all the time. As we mentioned before, on the Maximus 13 Hero, the power limits are unlocked by default. So all we need to do is load the optimized defaults and the power limits are unlocked. We also enable XMP. XMP stands for Extreme Memory Profile. It allows memory vendors such as G-Skill to program higher performance settings onto the memory sticks. If the motherboard supports XMP, then you can enable the higher performance with a single BIOS setting. So it saves you from lots of manual configuration. We discussed the Intel XMP technology at length in a previous video titled Intel Extreme Memory Profile Explained. Check it out if you want more information. Upon entering the BIOS, go to the Extreme Tweaker menu. Set AI Overclock Tuner to XMP1. Set ASUS Multicore Enhancement to Enabled Remove All Limits. Then save and exit the BIOS. We re-ran the benchmarks and check the performance increase compared to stock operation. As expected, the performance uplift is most notable in multi-threaded benchmark applications, which would typically be heavily constrained by the default power limits. When running Prime 95 small FFTs with AVX enabled, the CPU operates stably at 4.6 GHz with 1.301 volt. The average CPU temperature is 79 degrees centigrade. The average VRM temperature is 40 degrees centigrade. And the average water temperature is 25 degrees centigrade. The average CPU package power is 216 watt. When running Prime 95 small FFT with AVX disabled, the CPU operates stably at 4.6 GHz with 1.227 volt. The average CPU temperature is 57 degrees centigrade. The average VRM temperature is 35 degrees centigrade. And the average water temperature is 28 degrees centigrade. The average CPU package power is 150 watt. Anyway, let's move on to our second overclocking strategy. Our second overclocking strategy features the package temperature threshold feature. The package temperature threshold is one of the AI features included with most ACES motherboards. This feature allows the user to target a specific maximum package temperature. If the CPU package temperature goes over this threshold, it will automatically reduce the frequency. This is a dynamic process that will continue to update the CPU frequency throughout your usage. We also use this feature during our i9-10900K overclocking test with cryo cooling. 
As ASUS has unlocked the Turbo Boost power limits by default on the Z590 motherboards, by default, ASUS has also enabled the package temperature threshold and set it to 90 degrees centigrade. With custom loop water cooling, there's obviously much more thermal headroom than with any other type of ambient cooling. We can overclock all the cores to 5 GHz. That's 100 MHz higher than the maximum single core boost frequency of 4.9 GHz and 400 MHz higher than the maximum all core boost frequency of 4.6 GHz. Upon entering the BIOS, go to the Extreme Tweaker menu. Set AI Overclock Tuner to XMP1. Set ASUS Multicore Enhancement to Enabled Remove All Limits. Set CPU Core Ratio to Sync All Cores. Set All Core Ratio Limit to 50. Enter the AI Features submenu. Set Package Temperature Threshold to 90. Set Regulate Frequency by Above Threshold to Enabled. Leave the AI Features submenu. Enable Ring Down Bin. Go to the Advanced menu. Enter the CPU Configuration submenu. Enter the CPU Power Management Control submenu. Set CPU C state to Enabled. Then save and exit the BIOS. We re-ran the benchmarks and check the performance increase compared to stock operation. As expected, the performance arises in both lightly and heavily threaded workloads. When running Prime95 Small FFT with AVX enabled, the CPU operates stably at an average of 4723MHz with 1.366 volt. The average CPU temperature is 89 degrees centigrade, the average VRM temperature is 44 degrees centigrade, and the average water temperature is 26 degrees centigrade. The average CPU package power is 243 watt. When running Prime95 Smiley 50 with AVX disabled, the CPU operates stably at 5 GHz with 1.442 volt. The average CPU temperature is 79 degrees centigrade, the average VRM temperature is 45 degrees centigrade, and the average water temperature is 26 degrees centigrade. The average CPU package power is 248 watt. Our third overclocking strategy uses the ASUS AI overclocking feature. ASUS AI overclocking is a novel approach to automatic overclocking. Rather than the engineers programming a couple of fixed overclocking settings as options in the BIOS, AI overclocking attempts to work out the best overclock settings on its own. It does this by evaluating the quality of your processor and your cooling solution. Based on this evaluation, the proprietary algorithm will adjust the CPU frequency and voltages. In our case, AI overclocking set the single core OC to 5 GHz and the all core OC to 4.7 GHz. So a 100 MHz bump from default maximum boost frequencies. Upon entering the BIOS, go to the Extreme Tweaker menu. Set AI Overclock Tuner to XMP1. Set ACES Multicore Enhancement to Enabled Remove All Limits. Set CPU Core Ratio to AI Optimized. Then save and exit the BIOS. We re-ran the benchmarks and checked the performance increase compared to default operation. As you can see, the performance increases across the board. However, in all-core multi-thread applications, we find the performance to be lower than our second overclocking strategy using package temperature threshold due to the lower frequency. When running Prime95 small FFT with AVX enabled, the CPU operates stably at 4.7 GHz with 1.351 volt. The average CPU temperature is 89 degrees centigrade, the average VRM temperature is 43 degrees centigrade, and the average water temperature is 25 degrees centigrade. The average CPU package power is 241 watts. When running Prime95 small FFTs with AVX disabled, the CPU operates stably at 4.7 GHz with 1.286 volt. The average CPU temperature is 62 degrees centigrade, the average VRM temperature is 39 degrees centigrade, and the average water temperature is 27 degrees centigrade. The average CPU package power is 170 watts. In our last overclocking strategy, we tried to build on top of what we've learned so far and maximize the system performance. While that may sound as simple as just increasing the CPU ratio from 50x by 1 to 51x, it turns out to be a little bit more complicated than expected. In the end, we're only able to increase the frequency to 5.1 GHz for our two best cores and leave the other cores to 5 GHz. We use Rocket Lake's brand new specific core ratio limit feature to ensure that 5.1 GHz is only applied to the best two cores. We also enable XMP. We use the CPU package threshold feature to target a maximum temperature of 90 degrees centigrade. This feature will ensure that the frequency is automatically reduced if the temperature exceeds 90 degrees. For example, when running a very heavy workload. 
Since we know that pushing the ring frequency can be quite tricky on Rocket Lake CPUs, we enable ring down bin feature. This allows the CPU to automatically reduce the ring frequency if necessary to ensure stability. Upon entering the BIOS, go to the Extreme Tweaker menu. Set AI Overclock Tuner to XMP1. Set ASUS Multicore Enhancement to Enabled Remove All Limits. Set CPU Core Ratio to By Core Usage. Set 1 Core Ratio Limit to 6 Core Ratio Limit to 51, 51, 50, 50, 50, 50. Enter the specific core submenu. Set Core 0 to Core 5 Specific Ratio Limit to 51, 51, 50, 50, 50, 50. Leave the specific core submenu. Enter the DG plus VRM submenu. Set CPU load line calibration to level 7. Leave the DG plus VRM submenu. Enter the AI features submenu. Set package temperature threshold to 90. Set regulate frequency by above threshold to enabled. Leave the AI features submenu. Set ring down bin to enabled. Set CPU core cache voltage to adaptive mode. Set additional turbo mode CPU core voltage to 1.525. Then save and exit the BIOS. We reran the benchmarks and checked the performance increase compared to stock operation. As you can see, in the majority of the benchmarks, we reach our best performance results. When running Prime 95 small FFT with AVX enabled, the CPU operates stably at 4.6 GHz with 1.354 volts. The average CPU temperature is 89 degrees centigrade, the average VRM temperature is 52 degrees centigrade, and the average water temperature is 29 degrees centigrade. The average CPU package power is 218 watts. When running Prime 95 small FFT with AVX disabled, the CPU operates stably at 5 GHz with 1.458 volt. The average CPU temperature is 85 degrees centigrade, the average VRM temperature is 56 degrees centigrade, and the average water temperature is 30 degrees centigrade. The average CPU package power is 246 watts. All right, let's wrap this up. In general, I really enjoyed overclocking the Intel Core i5-11600K processor. Overclocking Rocket Lake is very similar to Comet Lake, but it's different enough that it's not just copy-paste of what we already know from before. I managed to get the single core maximum frequency up to 5.1 GHz, up from 4.9 GHz, and all core maximum stable up to 5 GHz, which is up from the baseline of 4.6 GHz. The limiting factor of the 11600K and seemingly most of the Rocket Lake CPUs is the temperature and voltage. Running Prime 95 small FFTs with AVX at 4.7 GHz requires 1.37 volts. This voltage causes us to see 89 degrees centigrade and nearly 250 watts power consumption under load. Gray cooling will therefore be a great asset to have when overclocking. Using the package temperature threshold feature is something that I will definitely be integrating in any of my future ACES based overclocking videos because it allows you to benefit from elevated performance with minimal work. Combining enabling the power, uh, unlock power limits by default and this package temperature threshold is something I definitely approve of because doesn't matter if you have a poor cooling solution or a great cooling solution, the system will automatically give you uh, pretty much the best performance you can get out of the box. Anyway, that's it for me for this video. I think this is probably my last Rocket Lake video as, well, there's nothing left after doing the Core i5, but I'll definitely return for any future Intel platforms. Uh, as usual, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them in the comment section below and till the next time.